Tom here from Orange Systems, and we're going to talk about Mikrotik Switch OS. And Switch OS is an alternative to the router board software that comes on the Mikrotik. Now, it comes with the Switch OS as well. It's nothing hacky you have to do here to try to figure out how to load it or swap it out. We're going to show you how to change it. It's actually really easy. Now, why does it exist? Well, even Mikrotik realized the same thing many users of Mikrotik have realized. The router OS, while powerful, is also complex. And the complexities of it for people who go, hey, I just really want to use some Switch functions and set up a couple of VLANs. Is there an easy easier way to do this than going through all the config files inside of the router system? There is, and that's what Switch OS is. We're going to show you how to switch to it, which is really easy, and a couple basic features on how it works and why I think it's a good idea, and I'm glad that Mikrotik did this because it, it's a good thing. They've had it for a little while. I just have never reviewed it. Um, I have talked about it when I reviewed this switch in particular, and this is the one we're going to be demoing it on, which is a CRS305-1G dash 4s plus i n um, i'll leave a link to the review i did on this mikrotik does have you know rather long model names on there but it helps you identify which exactly switch is which one and this is a software that's supported on many of them before we dive into that let's first if you'd like to learn more about me or my company head over to lawrencesystems.com if you'd like to hire short project there's a hires button right at the top if you'd like to help keep this channel sponsor free, and thank you to everyone who already has, there is a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you're looking for deals or discounts on products and services we offer on this channel, check out the affiliate links down below. They're in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store. We have a wide variety of shirts that we sell, and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics you've seen on this channel. Now, back to our content. Now, we'll start out with specifics. This is the device we're going to be working from for this demo here. And this is that mouthful that I had said before, and I've reviewed this switch before. It's actually a really affordable 10 gig switch. And part of the reason I'm bringing this up is because, well, this is also a really affordable 10 gig switch. And a lot of people come up with this question when I know they're building their home lab uh, or building out small networks and they're going, hey, I'm looking for something really affordable uh, that has some 10 gig connectivity. And Mikrotik really, that's one of the things they've locked into and Serve the Home has done several reviews of different models they've had. They have 10, even 40 gig switches that are at really good price points. And especially for people learning and getting into networking, um, you know, when you're a home user, you're not necessarily looking for the most expensive enterprise three-year warranty switch uh, or even longer warranties or even more bells and whistles and features, you're going, I just want some 10 gig for my home for some of the basic things I'm doing. And Mikrotik, I will completely admit, fits these categories very well. And that being said, the first challenge you run into is what the interface looks like for the router board. Now, there's a couple different ways to configure Mikrotix. You can use the web interface, which is ugly, and they just kept bolting on more things is kind of how I feel. There is the Winbox software, and there's always learning the command line. And for many people, they're going, wow, that seems like a lot for someone who just wants to build a lab where their focus isn't network engineering, but they do want 10 gig because maybe they have a video editing set up at home and they don't want to spend a lot of money. These are all valid categories for why people may want to buy 10 gig switches, and they go, but I don't need BGP at home, and I don't need... Uh, wireless. And you're probably saying, but Tom, does that little switch even have wireless on it? And someone argued with me and insisted there was a wireless device in here on the review I did. I, I don't think it exists. And this is one of the challenges right away with router board OS is they pretty much just have the same feature set, whether the switch has all the options or not, all in here. So whether or not all of these features are even supported on here, I'm not exactly clear because they all show up. And I found that kind of interesting. And this is the challenge with router board OS is it does have a lot of features, but even if those features don't exist on that particular model, don't worry, they're still in here, which can cause, at least in my opinion, some confusion and the fact that there's so many things that you'll probably never use. So we're going to go here to system and we're going to go to um, router board. Now, right here's router board and right over here, just down a little bit lower is switch OS. This is also an example of one of the problems. This does only have and has checked these five ports because it only has five, but it still has all the checkbox uh, to allow from other ports. Now, this is where you can actually go in here and upgrade to the latest version of Switch OS. But we're actually going to switch to it because I've already done the upgrade part. Um, so from router board, you can control switch some of the Switch OS uh, in terms of 
the settings when it comes to pushing things over for uh, firmware. But what you cannot control is anything you do in Routerboard or SwitchOS seems to be independent of each other. Uh, that has been all the testing I've done, and I didn't find this in their documentation uh, definitively, but it does appear that if I change something in Routerboard OS, when it reboots in SwitchOS, that isn't there, and vice versa. If I change something in SwitchOS, it doesn't show up in Routerboard. So they are two independent operating systems. Routerboard also takes a little bit longer to boot than SwitchOS. Anyways, let's go over here to Routerboard, Settings, and Boot OS. We'll just choose SwitchOS, Apply, and then we reboot it, and it'll be into SwitchOS. That's it. That's all you have to do to get in here. And while Routerboard does boot up in about, oh, I don't know, probably 10, 20, 30 seconds, depending on the model, um, SwitchOS boots up almost instantly. I'd probably say like five seconds. It seems to boot really, really fast when we have that in there um, when you do the switch. No big deal. And we're going to go all the way back over here to system because this is what the switch OS looks like, which the default username is just admin. Um, if we wanted to boot back over to router OS, we can just go here and switch back into it. Now, you don't really have to do anything else. Once you've switched it once and you don't boot back in there, every time you boot this up, it's going to go into the switch OS. Now, over here, this is all left at default. And I do have, and I'll just point out in case you're wondering how I'm plugging things in, I do have one of the RG45 SFP Plus adapters in here in order to plug it into my laptop for this demonstration. This is probably not the best switch because if you're trying to get 10 gig over uh, RG45, they have models that are, you know, have that. But I've done the review and shown that these RG45 SFP Plus, they do get warm. And as someone pointed out, if you were to put four of them in here, this switch may overheat. That is an issue. One doesn't seem to cause too many problems. I've left that on for a while, but they do generate quite a bit more heat. So see, so just wanted to make sure that was clear. Back to over here. So by default, everything's enabled and it tells me what SFP module I have in there. I've talked about that when I did the review. Port isolation is already set up uh, properly. It does have the ability to set up lag, but you can see how much easier it is to set things up in general when you're in here. There's just a one row of options across the top. Forwarding. RTSP, stats, errors, history, VLAN options. Now, sending VLANs is a multi-step process in router OS and a little bit more confusing, or at least it was to me. They do have over here through their documentation, the really simplistic way you can set up VLANs and add very specific in VLAN menus and entries and add specify port memberships to certain VLANs. So you have all these options to really lock things down. We're gonna show you just the really basic configuration, but they do have extended configuration options in here for how to do things. So there's, they have a separate dedicated wiki for Switch OS with a very few examples. And this is something people have asked me about uh, is doing more videos on this. That is some, weak point that they have. You won't find a ton of documentation on Amikotech. There's people who have really taken the time to learn it, um, but it's not like they have the most. I mean, look how thin their documentation is. They have all of three examples. But back to the configuration here uh, and showing you how to actually set it up. So we have already defined beyond the scope of this particular video, but we'll make a few assumptions here. We have some VLANs defined. One of those VLANs is VLAN 69. So we have this, the management port, and we'll just show you what it looks like physically here. Uh, this blue cable, which is also PoE, by the way, has all ports coming across, all VLANs coming across, all data. So by default, and this is actually a nice feature on Mikrotik that it does this by default, when you bring in all VLANs to it, even if you don't define those VLANs, as in define them out, it will still by default pass all those VLANs. So even if you just use this as a pass through switch, all the VLANs and all the tag traffic that's coming in, it'll pass back out to the next port. I bring that up because that is not the default of all switches. Some managed switches will not do that. They will only pass what has been defined or the default, I should say, is to only pass defined. You can say pass all as a option, but um, that's a nice feature of them because it makes it really easy to configure because if I only want to split off one VLAN, VLAN 69, and we're going to take this port, which is the one we have the SFP plugged into is port one. And we're just going to say, go ahead and still send all the standard traffic across and we're just going to hit apply all. Also, that's it. We had to apply it that fast. And we're going to switch over to the terminal where we have no carrier and I'll show you that applying it that fast we're going to plug this in and in just a few seconds it's going to get 
an IP address from the dot 69 network. Sees the link. There we go, we got the IP address, 172.16.69.126. Now we're gonna go ahead and unplug it, no carrier, and we'll switch back over, it's gonna lose the IP address. What about another VLAN? 50, so apply all, I think 50 is a defined one on my network. Okay, yep, did confirm. I have uh, 69, which is one I use for most. That's where a lot of our test equipment goes. 50 is Internet of Insecure Things, mostly for testing. And 1337 is uh, where we do cybersecurity testing uh, for some other stuff. So we can plug in any of these, 50 or 1337. So go back over here to the Microtik. We plugged in 50, we hit apply. We switch back over to here. We plug it back in. And in a few seconds, it's gonna get a 192.168.50 network. And away we go, 50.102. And we can go over here, 1337, apply all. Now, this is me unplugging it and plugging it back in is just so I will force my computer to grab a new address. It won't, if it didn't see a change in status, it won't necessarily grab a new address. That's just DHCP going, hey, I have an address. It's, my lease isn't up, so I'm not to ask for another one. I could just do a DHCP refresh renew, but it also will do that by unplugging it when it sees a link state change. And now we're on the 10.13.37.102 network. So that's really it. I mean, you can go more advanced. You can get into ACLs. You can build all of these options in here. Uh, but, you know, do you need that? It depends on what level you want to go through. So you still have a reasonable amount of features in Switch OS. Uh, it does have options for, like right here, it discovered some of the devices locally when you're looking for hosts. Uh, IGMP, SNMP, are you building ACL information, or ACL rules, I should say, on here. Uh, system with the update, trusted ports when you want certain things on, whether or not you want to trust these for that. Really, the functions you need in a Switch, easy to do. Also, uh, it hasn't an update since February, but when you download and install the upgrades, um, which it doesn't have one, it said there wasn't any on there, so I got the little error message. So far, all the updates I've tested on this always worked perfectly fine and never had any issues, and it does have download, backup, and config. So overall, I really like Switch OS, and I think it's a powerful thing to add to the Mikrotik line of switches to make them easier to use. For a lot of people who just want to use the switching functions, no, that doesn't use the routing functions at all because someone's going to point out, doesn't that switch have layer three routing? And I'll refer you back to Serve the Home who did a review of this switch and it has layer three routing in spirit, but it's just not practical because of just how slow it is. And this is one of those other things about Mikrotik. Everyone likes to tell me how many features they have and get all excited because they really do throw a lot in the Switch OS, but how well do they work is, is a different thing. So having a feature to check a box on a list to make the marketing people happy to say, yes, it does have layer three routing. And you're like, well, what speed can it route at? Oh, we don't want to discuss that. But I'll leave a link also to the server home review of this particular switch as well and my review. Um, I still think it's a great switch. I think it's a great switch though. I didn't say great router because it does have certain, you know, uh, routing functions that can be in there. But either way, check out Switch OS. Uh, you can see how quick and easy it was just to do one of the most common requested features, set up a VLAN on there. I think it's a solid, um, you know, for the platform to have this on there. It makes our switches that much more desirable. And maybe I'll get around to reviewing or maybe Mikrotik will reach out to me and send me one because I don't really have a use case uh, for them. But I do like that switch I had mentioned in check out serve the home they've reviewed a few different models um they have some 40 gig options that are well surprisingly affordable with 40 gig uh ports you can connect to servers and 10 gig ones you can uh, connect to desktops for people who need that high speed but don't really want to pay that high sticker price of some of the other you know larger brand name if you will uh, switches and i think for home users and for even some of the small people business people who are just going i just don't need to go spend two grand on a switch but for 5.99 i can get one that has eight 10 gig ports or this one right here which uh, has four 10 gig ports and usually msrp because they sell out quite a bit but i've seen them going for around 129 to 150 dollars four 10 gig ports for that kind of price and one one gig port for an uplink not bad at all so i still think for those of you that uh, would say, would Tom ever review a Mikrotik switch? Yes, I did finally review one. Yes, I still like it. I think it's a good product. Uh, so I, I, I will show some love towards the product, and I really like it because of the Switch OS. All right, thanks.